A lot of people, home growers, school gardeners, community gardeners, even small farmers, are not going to inherit good soil. So they will need some ty type of extensive tillage coupled with organic matter, principally compost and cover crops, to ramp up their soil and to do it in short order so that they can grow productively for the home front and commercially uh, for the marketplace. Let me talk to you a little bit about our soil evolution, as it were, here at the Allen Chadwick Garden. At the outset in 1967, we had extremely poor soil. I'm going to say abject soil. It wasn't even soil. It was a subsoil. The site had been cleared and used to store construction materials. So what we had was a wickedly clayey subsoil with virtually no organic matter in it. Uh, you couldn't penetrate, quite literally, more than about four inches without a pickaxe. Uh, and it kind of looked like shades of this. And you see down here a representative sample. And it has a lot of sand in it. Our sandstone is called Santa Margarita sandstone. It has mica schist. You'll see these little sheeny, shiny things. That's the mica. Uh, in a really good high quotient of clay. And so when you dug into it or it got wet or you worked it, it had a tendency to do just this. Not good. Um, Moving along on our sojourn, our odyssey towards soil fertility, let's fast forward 55 years, and it didn't take 55 years to get where we're at now. It took about three to five years till we had a reasonably workable fertile soil, and that soil would have looked something like this pile here. Certainly darker in color than the original uh, orange clay, uh, with really reasonable structure and a good depth of maybe a foot or so. And then as we moved along, maybe at year eight or ten and increasingly so, we now have this. Uh, one workshop participant referred to it as a dreamy soil. What we have is a two, two and a half foot nice a horizon topsoil high in organic matter and you can tell a little to a lot about your soil by its color the lighter the color the less the organic matter and the less the uh, nutrient content and organic matter and nutrient content go hand in glove as it were they say for every half percent rise in organic matter you get about 15 to 20 percent more nutrients across the board that is all the macro and micro nutrients so we went from abject uh, beginnings to kind of seventh heaven uh, this soil is a delight to work and increasingly needs less tillage and working and it is a delight to insert plants and seeds into and almost just stand back and watch them grow. Now, it's actually tougher work than that, but more rather than less, that's the deal. Well, how did we go from one end of the continuum to the other? Um, and I might add our organic matter content, content went from literally zero to somewhere eight, nine percent now, which is um, Fairly phenomenal and probably not achievable on a farm field scale, but can be achieved in a handwork garden. Uh, we went there by utilizing what I call, what I've coined, the three C's. Cultivation, which is a more fancy term for tillage or digging and plowing, variously garden scale, farm scale. Cultivation, cover crops, and compost.
Uh, I'm here today to talk about our grain drill. Um, this is, I'd say, one of the more important tools for organic growers um, because it allows us to be really kind of precise and creative with the cover crops that we sow. Um, so we use it mainly, again, for cover crops. These will happen mostly in the winter, but sometimes in the summer. Um, so right now, um, it's, uh, we're at kind of the end of fall, pretty close to winter. Um, we had a, a break in the weather um, and are about to get some rain, so we're going to put some cover crop in the ground here. Um, we're in our orchards, so in our stone fruits, and we're going to um, put in some vetch seed. Um, today we're seeding purple vetch. Uh, the cover crop is what we plant in the winter time to cover the soil when we have all these heavy rains and especially this year um, where we saw almost 60 inches of rain up here on campus. Having a thick stand of cover crop was really important to protect our soil. This is what we rely on for most of our fertility uh, for the growing season. Um, and what you see right here is a well-established uh, grass cover crop. This is a triticale um, that was sown at about 100 pounds an acre. Um, and we have a nice dense stand that you see is just starting to head up and set seed, which is ideally right when we want to be tilling this in so that we don't lose nutrients uh, from the crop itself and from the biomass into the seeds. So once the cover crop is at this stage and our ground has dried down to a good moisture that's ready for tillage, that's when we get in and start our operations. The process is to mow down our cover crop. Um, we do that with a flail mower. So there's a, a series of many, many little flails that spin around and chop up our, um, our tall cover crop into little bite-sized pieces that when we turn that into the soil, the microbes will be able to eat up and then mineralize and release that, the nutrients from that cover crop for our subsequent crops. So for the actual mowing passes with the flail mower, we actually do, it's a two-step process. So first, we do a high mow on this cover crop because we have so much biomass that the flail mower can't actually handle chopping it all up to the fineness that we want it. Um, so our first step is to actually drive through the field with the mower just slightly lifted above the ground and do what we call a high mow. That's gonna leave a little bit of stock. It's gonna chop up most of our material, but it's still gonna leave some bigger chunks um, of the grass that aren't fully chopped up. Our next step after doing the high mow in one direction is we'll come back the other direction with the mower, but mow all the way to the ground. So this section here has been low mowed, and now you see that when I actually rake my hands through this, the material's so much finer. And that's really important. This size of uh, the material is so important uh, for fast breakdown in the springtime, which is gonna determine when we can actually get back in and plant. So the next step in our process after we've done the high mow and the low mow with the flail mower is to come through with our manure spreader and apply compost. So the way that this manure spreader works is it has a conveyor belt that's driven by the PTO shaft on the tractor. It has this angle iron here that slowly moves the compost out. This piece of plywood is set at a certain height so that we're metering how much compost gets to flow through the spreader. And then these discs go ahead and spin around to just help distribute that compost evenly behind the tractor. We have this set based on just measuring weight um, and how fast we drive the tractor to apply about five tons an acre uh, of compost uh, with a single pass of this tractor at about 3.8 miles an hour. Final step of this process is to use our mechanical spader uh, to incorporate all of that biomass that we've now chopped up into little fine pieces as well as the compost that we've applied to the surface. And this spader will just kind of tuck all of that material deep below the soil so it can get incorporated into the soil profile and so that all of our biological activity on, in the soil has access to all of those finely chopped up pieces of, of green manure. So the mechanical digger or the spader as it's sometimes called, the way that it works is we like to say that it's essentially double digging on a garden scale, but with a tractor. There's a series of six spades under the spader that work down and then flick the soil up and then repeat. And this spader will creep along at 0.34 to 0.5 miles an hour. Um, so it moves very slowly, but you can see that it does a really great job of working the soil into a fine tilth. You know, just yesterday we had tall cover crop in this field and now at the right moisture, we have really finely aggregated soil that's perfectly moist 
uh, to encourage breakdown of our cover crop residue.